All right, greetings. Hello. This is Matt from Red Root Defense here with another video, uh, another unboxing video today, tonight, I guess, at dark. Um, we're going to unbox um, a really nice rifle in just a minute. But first, let me get this out of the way. Um, thank you for listening to these. Thank you for subscribing and watching. Um, I appreciate your comments, any kind of comments. Um, I try to respond to them as, as quickly and, as I can, uh, but I really do appreciate you taking the time to check them out. Uh, these are just things that come to my shop. I run a small shop here in Georgia and, uh, just things that I might, that I think are interesting that hopefully you think are interesting. Uh, maybe give you a chance to see something you haven't seen before. So if it works out to be that, then it's great. Um, also, everything that you see here is either something that I've got in the shop that I'm working on uh, or it's something that we bought for the shop. I mean, nothing was sent to me for free. All this was paid for. Um, so I am free to give you my unvarnished opinion, I mean, which I would do anyway. But I'm not obligated to give you a good review or a bad review or whatever. Um all this stuff is, is stuff that we paid for to come in the shop. So it's just a public interest, give you something to look at. Um, but now that we got that out of the way, why don't we get started on this one? Uh, what we got today, if you haven't been able to read the box yet, this is a Christensen Arms that we're having unboxing today. Let me uh, get this started. All right, so here's the box. I'm just going to kind of tilt it up. Uh, my camera does not allow me to do a whole lot of in and out stuff. Um, this is the box itself, obviously. Uh, what this is, is a Ridgeline FFT, uh, which is a little bit different from the regular Ridgeline series that Christensen puts out. Very fine rifles. Uh, the Ridgelines that I've seen are really impressive, and they shoot really well. So the FFT basically was designed to be a lighter uh, version of the uh, classic Ridgeline. A uh, couple of improvements, which we'll go through, uh, show you once we get them out of the box. So let's take it out of the box. All right. So still got the foam on the ends here. And I can tell you just from picking this thing up, uh, first time picking it up, the sucker is light. Um, it's, Definitely, definitely lighter. Uh, this is a 20 inch barrel um, in the burnt bronze Cerakote finish and the green and tan accented stock, uh, which I'll get a closer view of in a minute. Let me put that down here. Uh, now we have one accessory box in the box, and it's actually part of the box. Um, and that's kind of cool because it doesn't fly out when you open it so let's see what we got all right we got uh some lucas going oil which i have not tried if anybody out there's tried it you know feel free to throw me a comment out there and tell me if you like it or not uh, i'm a big fan of ballastol but you know i'm not opposed to trying new things on the back of this is just some earplugs which is nice um let's see you have your christensen arm sticker uh, thank you for choosing Christensen. It tells you how to register, which is important. Here's some more information on Lucas Gunnell. This thing right here, the manual. You notice it's not very big. It's not going to take you very long to read it, but I encourage you to read it. Anytime you get a new firearm, new weapon, read the manual. It's lots of good information in there. Disassembly, reassembly, um, tips on how to use it. You know, this is stuff that the manufacturer obviously wants you to know. So I recommend reading it. If you ever buy a used firearm and it doesn't have a manual, call the manufacturer, go to their website. You can probably download it. Um, they'll send you one for free if you can't, if you prefer a printed version or whatever, but do that. It's very important for you to have it. So, all right. And the last but not least in the box, I can take it out. What do we have here? The bolt. So that's important. 
I don't know what that noise was I made, and I probably can't duplicate it. So let's put this up. Let's get this box out of the way so we can concentrate on this nice rifle we got here. All right, here we go. So we have the 20 inch Ridgeline FFT. Um, very nice, very light. I mean, incredibly light rifle, nicely balanced. Um, you know, in big hand, it's not hard to balance stuff, but it was really heavy one way or the other to be difficult. Um, really put together nicely. So you see, give you a little bit more close up of the stock, which I think looks really nice. I like this, this uh, color pattern, especially mixed in with the bronze Cerakote. Um, and obviously the carbon fiber wrap, wrapped barrel, which you, you know, won't get the key on. Also, you have a muzzle brake, which is a new design uh, for Christensen uh, that they added on this rifle. This is a threaded barrel. This will come off if you wanted to put a suppressor on it. But, you know, other than that, I see no reason to take it off. It's probably a really good brake. And this is a 243. So if you see on the, you can see on the barrel there, I hope you can see it. 243 Winchester, 1 in 10. Um, nicely done. And go to the other side. Let you view it from the other side. Where are they? Riding on the barrel. You really see the finish nicely from this side. Um, nice recoil pad. Overall, a very nice looking rifle. So let's... What's the difference? What is it about the FFT that's different? Well, I said they, they made it to be lighter. Um, so there's a couple of things. First thing, the magazine plate here is carbon fiber, not metal. So that takes a little weight off. Um, carbon fiber wrapped barrel. This is a 461R, I believe, stainless steel barrel wrapped in carbon fiber. Uh, if you look on the bolt, fluted, of course. Um, the bolt knob is actually carbon fiber, so that takes a little weight off. Um, and as far as the weight goes, I can tell you, the old ridge lines, uh, I believe if my memory is correct, is 6.3 pounds. This one is 5.3 pounds, so you're talking one whole pound. Doesn't sound like a lot, but when you're toting it a bunch of places, if you were to take this out west or somewhere, or to Texas, or uh, just even through the woods of South Georgia, somewhere like that. I mean, you're toting around for a long time. A pound is a lot. going to make a difference. So, all right, let's put the bolt in. If you look on the back side of the receiver, there's your bolt remove uh, release. Um, obviously, when you're putting the bolt in, you really don't need it. Nice, smooth insert. There's your safety. Safe is to the back, fires to the front. And this is what they call the trigger tech trigger um, from Christensen. Um, it's, it's, a, it's a nice curve, fits your fingers. But look at this pull. I mean, this is, I'm, I'm just going to, hopefully you can hear this. And hopefully you can see what my thumb is doing. So you can see what this trigger pull is like. This trigger pull is remarkable. I don't know what that is in terms of pull, but it's very crisp. Uh, there's no drag to it whatsoever. Uh, that's very nice. I like it a lot. So, all right. So, um, there's your bolt in. Uh, like I said, you're one pound lighter already. Uh, this has what they call match chambering, which is a lot more tighter tolerance for the chamber. Uh, barrel is hand lapped which we'll talk about lapping in a minute. I do want to talk about that. Uh, the new design of brake, like I told you before, which is also the burnt bronze Cerakote. You can get this in a stainless finish, I believe, too. Uh, this came in the bronze, and I really, really like it. Already got your swivels, of course. And as I pointed out before, a nice recoil pad. Um, an improved ejection port, a little bit deeper. So we'll have any trouble with that. Rifle holds four rounds in the magazine internally 
and you can put one more in the chamber so you got five to pick from. And as I said, it's 243. So you can do a lot with a 243, all the way up from varmints uh, to deer, so around here anyway. Um, and it's got a pretty good effective range, three to 500 yards probably. And I know I'm going to get some people telling me that you can shoot longer than that with a 243, and you probably can. It just depends on your load. Um, I probably wouldn't do it. But that's just me. If I'm going to shoot over 500 yards, I'm going to shoot something uh, a little bit bigger, I think. Uh, I'm probably not going to take a shot at some something over 500 yards with this particular rifle. Um, but anyway, so that's um, all the little details for this particular rifle, uh, which is put together very nice. So let's talk about lapping for a minute, since I mentioned that before. Uh, what is barrel lapping and why is it important? Okay, when barrels are processed, when the barrel is first created, it starts in a blank. So you pretty much got a blank piece of metal um, and it is processed to put in uh, the rifling. Uh, there's two or three different ways you can do that, that that's done that way in the factory. But anyway, so it's tooled and there's a machine and they go through and it cuts the rifling, which is the lands are sitting up and the grooves or down and it's one twist um, went all the way through so when they finish there's going to be some imperfections left by the tooling it's going to be some burrs there's going to be some tool marks it ain't going to be perfect um, lapping is a process where you go through the barrel uh, i've seen it done with lead with an abrasive uh, almost like slugging a barrel um, there's lapping kits you can buy, I think, to do it. Um, anyway, so lapping is a process where they go through the bore after the tooling is done, and it really smooths, smooths out the bore. It takes a lot of any burrs or any imperfections, takes a lot of that out uh, to make it a nicer, smoother bore. Now, why does hand lap matter? Well, hand lap is important. In this case, these rifles have a lot of hand work in them. Uh, they're manufactured to be precise, uh, and they take the time to hand lap their barrels as they create them. Uh, a lot of your major mass produced, uh, rifles, um, just firearms in general, uh, a lot of your mass produced barrels are not lapped, um, not to that extent. Um, when they're cranking them out on an assembly line, they're not going to take the time to run them through and, and really lap them. Um, and I've seen the results of this before. It's not something that can't be handled or taken care of, but I've had brand new uh, firearms that needed some smoothing out, so to speak, through the bore. And there's different ways you can do it. Uh, you can buy a lapping kit and do it yourself, or you can do it by fire. Um, if you basically, I mean, basically, if you run a lot of full metal jackets or metal plated bullets, um, through your barrel, it tends to do that. Uh, so that's just something to keep in mind. It's not necessarily going to be precise, but it, and it takes a while to do it. But anyway, so these barrels are hand lapped. Now, that's when it's in a blank process. After the barrel is contoured and chambered, there's probably going to be some more tool marks in there. Uh, so Christensen has come up with a break-in period for their rifles that I highly recommend that you follow. It's on their website. This is where I got this from, uh, but it does work. So it takes a little bit of effort. So I'm going to tell you what it is. When you first got your rifle, uh, the first thing you do is you fire two. Um, well, make sure your bore is clear for one. Then you're going to start. You're going to fire two groups of three rounds each. So two, three round groups, that's six rounds. Then you're going to take a patch and you're going to fill it, put some solvent on the patch and start running it through the barrel. Using, of course, a muzzle guide so that you don't damage your crown or your uh, the end of your muzzle or your brake. Um, take the bolt out so that you can go all the way through and then take it all the way back out. You're going to do that a few times until your patches are relatively clean. Um, then you're going to take the appropriate bore brush, also dipped in solvent. Now, you can use whatever solvent makes you happy. I'm a Hoppies number nine person. I've used it for years. Basically, that's all I've ever used. I've tried some other ones. I've never liked anything as much as I like Hoppies. 
and now there's there's different versions of hoppies and there's different versions of other uh, solvents you can use and I won't get into a discussion about what's better and what's not because that's kind of a personal preference to me uh, but I like hoppies so take your proper chamber bore brush again using your chamber using your nozzle guide here with no bolt and you're going to go all the way through with that brush and all the way back. That's one repetition. You're going to do that 20 times. So that's one, two. That's one. You're going to do that 20 times. So that's actually 40 strokes. 40, one stroke in, one stroke out. Uh, another note, when you do that, do not stop in the middle of the barrel. Do not change directions in the middle. Go all the way through, come all the way back out. So do that 20 times. Take another dry patch, run through it. Then you take an undersized bore brush, wrap a patch with a patch around it in solvent. Do it 20 times. One, two, that's once. Mm -hmm, two. So do that 20 times. Then run another patch through it, dry patch through it. Uh, you'll see the residue coming out. And Christensen actually says you'll see uh, blue residue, which is a copper fouling. That's pretty common. Um, so you've done, you've done the, uh, patch with solvent, you've done 20 reps with the, um, proper size bore brush you've done. And, and then you do another patch run through there after that. Then you do the undersized bore brush with a the patch. Then you run another patch through it. So then you're pretty clean. All right. Then you're going to shoot two more three round groups and start over. Dry pat, you know, solvent patch, proper size bore brush, undersized bore brush, regular patch. Start over. Three rounds, three rounds, start over. Until you've run 50 rounds through the barrel. After you've run 50 rounds through the barrel and you've cleaned it to their procedures, your barrel is broken in. And you should probably, at that point, you shouldn't have any more issues. If there is any kind of imperfection or burr in your rifling at that point, it should be taken care of. Um, that's personally, I, I mean, that's a lot and that's what they recommend. So that's what I do. Um, that's what I would do if this rifle was mine. Um, I don't necessarily do that to all my rifles or, or all my guns at once. I have my own processes that I'll go through. It just depends on the, what, you know, what it is and, and what I'm shooting through it. Um, but that's what they recommend, so that's what I would do. And um, not that you're going to have a ton of flapping that needs to be done. Um, these come uh, pretty clean. Um, I, I, you know, I don't think you're going to have too much of a problem with it, but it's good to run through that break-in process because that's what they recommend. So this is on their website too. So if you, you know, if I didn't explain it good enough or, or I confused you, which is very possible, just go to their website, check it out. It's on there. Um, I promise that's where I got it. So, all right. So then we talked about lapping. We talked about uh, cleaning process. Uh, of course, when you clean it after you shoot it, you don't have to go through that same process all the time. Just, you know, your patches and your bore brushes, depending on what you're shooting. Uh, you don't have to be that precise with it, but always, always, always remember, use a, use a muzzle guide. Um, go all the way through with the brush and come out. Never stop in the middle. Patch is the same way. It's just as easy. Just go all the way through and come all the way out. You don't want to cause any undue issues going back and forth, especially with that brush. So just remember that. Always come from this end with the muzzle guide. Uh, those can be found anywhere. Most stores have them. Amazon has it. They're easy to use. Maybe I'll do something on that one day um, if it need is there. So, all right. Well, that's pretty much it. Um, that's about everything there is to this particular rifle. I mean, I, I can't get over how nice this rifle is. Um, and I really, to be honest, uh, this is kind of a greenish tan and, and greenish color, but it's but it's really dark, so it may be more of a green. Um, and I can't remember exactly what. Let's see. Well, this says black and tan, so it's more black than it is green, so maybe I'm colorblind. 
I had a little issue determining black from green, but it's it's a really nice it's a really nice looking rifle. It feels great. Trigger pull is awesome. Um, I've never had a uh, Christensen rifle come through my shop that I didn't like. So maybe it's time for me to suck it up and get one. I don't know, but they're really nice. Oh, also I want to tell you they are drilled and tapped uh, for for uh, mounts bases. These rifles use a standard Remington 700 compatible base. So anything Remington 700 compatible will fit. This is a short action being a 243. Um, obviously, other calibers could be a long action, but this is a short action. So uh, Christensen does have their own mounts, their own bases, their own rings. Um, that's what I normally do because they're made by Christensen to fit this. Um, they are pretty I mean, I've never had to do anything extra to them. Never had to lap any rings. Never had to deal with, um, you know, out of a line or anything like that when I was using their um, their own stuff. So that, you know, that's just a recommendation. They're a little bit higher. Uh, so if you don't want to spend the money, you know, that's understandable too. Uh, but but that's what I recommended. Plus they're in the same finish, kind of finish as this. Uh, it matches up nicely. So, all right. Well, that's pretty much it. That's all I got. Um, I've been taking up too much of your time anyway. Thank you for listening. Thank you for watching. Um, I appreciate everybody who subscribed and watching this. Please, if you want to subscribe, please do click the notification button. You'll get a notification when there's a new video out because I hope to come out with a couple of more uh, in the near future. Um, I'm trying to be more prompt about these, but I'm not doing a very good job of it so far. Um, I've got some interesting stuff coming through the shop. So I want to try to get as much of that on videos as I can. Plus, I got an update on an old shotgun that I've been working on, and I want to get that on uh, a video to compare with the previous video that we had. So, anyway, thank you all very much for listening. I appreciate your time. Y'all have a good weekend, and um, until I see you, until next time, I'll see you when I.